Hey guys, hello, hello, happy Friday. Jerry Landry here with The Weathered Shed. Come on in, I have a fun DIY project I wanna show you today. Actually, it's partial project. <laughs> um, it is in progress. But I wanted to show you this piece of it um, because you can do this with anything uh, around your home, furniture, um, wall decor, etc. So I figured I would hop on and show you guys the cool, don't mind the mess behind me. Don't mind the mess behind the curtain. <laughs> oh, say hello as you come in, guys. I got you pulled up on my iPad. Um, we are gonna do some faux barnwood stamping today using the Iron Orchid Design decor stamps. So I wanna show you guys, um, I actually pulled these out of my um, guest bedroom. Check this out. These were $6.99, $6.99 Goodwill tables. Took the top off, painted it with a dark gray base coat with an overlay of an off-white. And then this is the decor stamp, you guys, that I am gonna be demonstrating. How do you get this look? Isn't that amazing? $6.99 crappy tables into this kind of look. And these are in my guest bedroom now. Pretty amazing, right? So let me show you um, the stamps that we're gonna be talking about. I know it's Good Friday. I'm sure a lot of folks are heading out of town. Uh, whatnot and um, so there may not be a lot of you around but if you watch the replay and you have any questions please feel free to ask them uh, I will go back and look over the comments um, later so the iron orchid design decor stamp it's the barnwood plank stamp it comes with two sheets um, of these amazing stamps as you see here and also a bunch of um, kerf marks and knot holes and nail holes and you name it and that's how you put together this amazing look so one of the things to um to teach you about is that when you get any of the iron orchid design decor stamps you want to condition them and how do you condition them all you do is you take a fine grit sandpaper and you just sand over lightly over the um the rubber stamp side and that just helps take off any sealant or anything that may have been on it um, during processing and just gives you a cleaner image when you go to stamp so that is called conditioning so again it's just light fine sandpaper over it um, to clean it hey Roxanne so that is all you need to do with any of the iron orchid design decor stamps and then they're ready to go Again, these are just rubber stamps, so you can wash them um, just with uh, warm soap and water, warm water and soap. <laughs> it's been a long day already. Um, warm water and soap, and they clean up really well so that you can use them again. One of the things that I have done with this particular set is I have left them on the backer sheet. And the reason for that is so that I can freehand stamp with each one of the sections. So it's up to you how you, um, you know, how you want to use them. You can purchase a, um, like an, uh, um, what do you call it, a stamping block um, and apply, put the stamps on those first. I just kind of like to freehand them. It just, to me, is a little bit easier. So, um, so that is what I'm going to do. Now, if you've seen any of my videos before, um, you guys know that I like to do this little trick of using saran wrap and um, just a, a flat board with some uh, actually press and seal on top of it. And I create my little, um, what do you call it? My little palette, if you will, that I brayer on. It just, um, it's inexpensive. It's something I have lying around. And instead of buying something, I love this because, especially for workshops, <laughs> just put your paint on it, use this as your brayering surface, remove the press and seal and throw it out, right? And it's good to go again. Easy cleanup, um, and I'm all about that. I'm all about easy quick. All right, so I'm gonna slide these stamp pieces aside, <clears throat> and I have this cardboard down to protect my, <coughs> excuse me, my surface because sometimes I can get a little sloppy and I start slapping stuff around. 
Um, which wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, right? Because real barn wood typically is painted very sloppily <laughs> and gets shabby over time, right? All right, so I am just gonna put down some, um, I'm using Dixie Belle Hurricane Gray. And this board, if you saw my video yesterday, all I did was it's, it's a half inch plywood, it's a finished plywood grade. And I put down a base coat of the Dixie Belle Hurricane Gray. And then over top, I applied um, the, what color did I use on top? Uh, American Paint Company um, in a home plate, it's called, which is just a very kind of a antique white, if you will. And now I'm just going to use the uh, Hurricane Gray for the stamping of the barn wood. All right. And you just pick, um, pick, just pick one of the designs to start with. I typically like to start with this one on the outer edge because the next one I lay, lay next to it will actually have lines so that it starts making, creating that board effect. Um, so I've got a little paint on here and all I'm gonna do is take my brayer, rub it through the paint. And these brayers are iron orchid design as well. They're a harder rubber brayer. I love them because you get a very thin coat, which is what you want. You don't need a thick coat of paint. Um, when you're stamping, okay, you'll get a cleaner image if you if you do not um, load up your paint too heavily, okay. And again, this is a <clears throat> barnwood look that we're going for, so we don't want we're not going for perfection, guys. Um, and one thing I will tell you is that the paint does dry pretty quickly, so you do have to kind of move along. So I'm just like I said, I'm going to start. On this outer edge right here all I'm gonna do is lay this down like that press make sure you guys can see I'm gonna have to keep moving the camera just so you guys can um, kind of get a, a feel for what I'm doing here I'll put it right here and do this so you get a better hopefully you get a better angle that way so I've just laid it down pressing, lift it up, and you can see the impression there, what's going on already. And then I'm just going to continue down. Because this board is so large, like I said, I'm just gonna have to keep moving you guys as I move along. But it's key that you guys stick around and watch a few layers of this because you won't get the full effect unless you watch um, a good majority of this okay so and this can be done guys on walls it can be done on um, furniture I mean it's just endless ideas so all I did was I take I took this next piece and I just kind of overlapped it um, overlapped the end so there's not like a really obvious and and sometimes there will be depending like this piece this section I did a little darker uh, so what I'll probably do here is I will put um, some faux nail holes right here um, so that you it kind of looks like a board transitioning all right hey Julie yeah isn't it cool it's so stinking cool so I, I literally have my camera stand <laughs> I have my camera stand on um, mounted to a, a table here. So I'm just going to kind of slide you guys. <laughs> I'm going to slide you guys around as I move um, so that you can get the whole, the whole idea here. Because otherwise you're so far away, you can't, I don't want to put the camera way up high and then have you guys not be able to see as much of the detailing. Um, so I'm going to actually... Reverse this one here a little bit. And again, you just press it down like so. Okay, so you can see that one's a lot lighter and that's totally fine. You'll, it'll start really coming to life when I start getting on the second row here. So again, brayering up my piece. And I'm almost going to make it to the end. Not quite. That's okay. Let's 
so stinking awesome. And then for that uh, little area at the end there, I'm just going to kind of pick a middle section here. Just get a little bit on there. The end. So I finished out that whole row there. Now, the next row is when you're really going to see it come to life. So I am going to... Uh, I'm going to take this one now. So this is the next piece that I'm going to use. And as you can see, there are lines here. So that will start defining um, where your board is. So I'm going to, I think I'm, I'm going to pick the camera up a little bit here. If I can. <laughs> it's not easy adjusting on the go, guys. So bear with me. Bear with me here. All right, hopefully, if I zoom you out a little bit here. All right, there we go. I just want you to be able to start seeing this second row here really well. Um, All right, is that good? Hopefully that's good. All right, so this piece, again, I'm in a brayer. It's not easy showing a big, um, a big honking, <laughs> a big honking board, because this board is huge. It's um, very, very large, but my plan for it is to apply an IOD, um, an IOD, uh, lost my train of thought, decor transfer to it, which is going to be just amazing. All right, so here we go. Again, just lay it down straight as possible to that other piece that you did. Look at that. This has kerf marks in it. I talked about that yesterday. These are called kerf marks. It's like imitates the saw blade. Um, isn't that cool? So now you're, now you're seeing what I'm talking about, right? Now it starts getting good. <laughs> now it starts getting really good. All right. Okay. And again, you just want to line it up close to that other where you left off, like so. Isn't it awesome, Deb? Yeah. So stinking cool. Ah! So amazing. Looks way better in person than it does on that camera, guys. But I was blown away because those little, those little Goodwill tables that I picked up, I could not believe how they turned out. Stinking amazing. And I'm actually going to go ahead and put the um, saw blade going the other direction. Just because I'm probably going to put a, a dividing mark in here. Oh my gosh, it's so stinking cool. So are you guys getting the idea now? Isn't this amazing? It really doesn't matter what kind you use, Deb. You just want a, um, a water-based paint just so you can clean it off of your stamps. Um, but you can use these stamps with ink as well. So just as long as they're, you can wash them. Um, I'm, I just happen to be using what I have laying around. I'm using um, some Dixie Belle. using some Dixie Bell. I'm going to continue the same direction with this last piece here. You guys are off camera, aren't you? You kind of can get the whole vision there, I hope. Amazing, amazing. Isn't that amazing? 
Oh my goodness. My goodness, goodness. How stinking cool is that, you guys? Okay, so we're going to start our third row, and you guys can actually see that in the camera, so that's good. I'm going to leave it sit right where it is. And this is just another texture. Look at this one. As you can see, each stamp is different, so it really... Um, I have seen people, um, other Iron Orchid design stockists, I'm a stockist for their products. They have done walls, guys, in their homes. It looks amazing. Um, so you don't have to have the expense of, you know, putting in barn wood or um, even the um, shiplap gets expensive. Um, you can create this cool look with a lot less money for a lot less money. All right, so here we go with our end piece here. Look at that. Oh, so stinking cool. So stinking cool. Is it not cool, guys? So amazing. It's really easy. Look at that. Isn't that something else? <laughs> it is an awesome alternative, Deb. Yeah, it is. Hi, Sandy. Hey, Barb. Yeah, isn't it cool? You guys need to come and play. Yes. Um, maybe I'll just do a workshop. You guys can come and make a faux board sample. Um, and what's great about it is if you do a small board, then think about how cool that is where you could put a quote over top of it. So now you have this faux barnwood um, backdrop to put um, words and letters over top of. I mean, how amazing will that be, right? Um, I think that's awesome. Awesome, awesome idea. So let me just scoot around here again because I need a little, I think I need a little, oh, maybe not. I probably need a little tad more paint on here. And like that. And you can, um, I, I kind of like to brayer off the excess um, so that I'm not, like it's not too heavy um, as well. So this one might be a little dark, but that's okay. And again, once you're done, if you think it's too, um, too stark or anything like that, well then you just sand it with sandpaper, <laughs> which again adds even more authenticity to the look, right? Um, so I think I am going to, yeah, I'm gonna do this alternate here like that and I mean on this one you definitely can't really see where I started and where I left off very easily um, on this one now right there you can because I got a little bit lighter um, but that's okay I could go back over this if I wanted um, a little bit my paint probably dried on me so let me just see if I can Kind of lay that back down here. There, that's better. All right. And you can, um, you know, after a few, you know, if you've done a row and you've left it sit, you can just wipe, take a, um, I like taking a uh, baby wipe um, when I'm in the middle of doing a project and just cleaning off my stamp with a baby wipe um, or a, you know, disinfectant wipe, whatever you got lying around works well. Oh yeah, that one's good. Look at that. Look at how stinking awesome. So cool, look at, isn't that cool you guys? Amazing. I need a little bit at the end. 
So I'm gonna do, just get this little end piece here like so. Going off the edge just so it looks authentic. And there you have that. Okay, so I'm not gonna go any further. I wanted to do these three sets so that you guys could get an idea of the differentiating designs for the planks, okay? Um, thanks, Roxanne. I love yours too, my dear. Um, <laughs> shopping at Walmart is way more, way more pleasant watching a video <laughs> with me. <laughs> oh, bless you, Julie. <laughs> okay, so here is the really cool part. Um, well, they're all, it's all cool. It's all, all cool. But I am going to show you all of these decorative elements, um, the embellishments to the planking, if you will. But look at these, you guys. Look at these. Nail holes. Nail holes. Knot holes. Now, again, you got to be a little bit, you know, strategic when you do these because you don't want it to look fake. You don't want to overdo it. So, um, so there is, you know, you got to do a little bit of, um, of planning and thinking. This is another piece. If you wanted to put um, lines in somewhere, um, you can do that. You could definitely use it even probably as an end piece to look like a where the board's ending. Um, where I like to use this one, I think it's this one, yeah. I like to use this actually on the end of my board because um, it to give an, a really authentic look if you're gonna be able to see the ends for any reason. Um, it's kind of nice to use that there, uh, like an edging on a, on a desk or something. Um, and then there's this one too. So you can actually overlay these kerf marks uh, where they work really well is on this first stamp here um, where this is more horizontal lines. You could add some kerf, kerf marks in here on the board if you wanted to in certain areas. Um, so it's just another, another piece, another embellishment um, to make the wood look even more authentic. And then here's some more lines. Um, but you guys can get the idea, right? I mean, look at how cool. So you can just add these things in where you see fit. Um, or you could just do, you know, the, the nails um, in certain spots. So let me show you that real quick. And again, I'm just going to brayer this up like so. And again, this is a two-stamp set. So remember where I said down here where you guys can kind of see there's already a line? That just seems like a natural place to put this, so that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm put that down there, like that. Look at that. Oh my gosh! Come on, seriously? <laughs> How cool is that? <laughs> that is so cool, right? Oh my gosh, so amazing. So stinking amazing. Um, <laughs> That's freaking awesome. So freaking awesome, isn't it? Hey, Jenny. Hey, Bonnie. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, it's so stinking cool. So one of the things that's bothering me, and you guys probably can't see it too well on your screen, um, there is a, a, a dark and a light transitioning right here. So I am going to pull my eye away from that. I'm actually going to add a couple. I'm going to add some of these kerf marks in there. Not real heavy with my paint, um, but just, uh, I think it just needs a little something right there. So I'm gonna see if that makes a difference. And I'm thinking it's going to. So, like that. Oh my gosh, yeah. Look at that, you guys. Do you see that? Can you guys see that? Holy mackerel. Can you see just that little bit Look at that, just added, <laughs> it's crazy. It is absolutely crazy. And um, just to keep it real, I'm gonna actually move it over onto the other side as well. Because typically that's what happens, right? The saw blade follows through um, and then you'll have um, some marks kind of directly across from that area. So that's what I'm gonna do right there like that some scuff marks like, right? So you just kinda gotta think about what you see when you are out and about and see like real barn wood. Um, I need a little more paint on my board here. 
And then I'll show you guys, I'm gonna add a couple more of these nail holes. And I'm also going to add in some knots, cause you gotta have knots in wood, right? Um, so this was the other one, the other nail hole one that I did not use. So I'm gonna use that one real quick here. So stinking easy. Um, and you kind of, you want to like alternate and you want to do, um, you know, you kind of want to like lay out your boards and then go, okay, where would it make sense to put one? Um, and I'm thinking right about here, I'm going to put another one like that. Can you guys see that? Okay. <clears throat> and, um, I think it makes sense probably not to do one on the next board um, and maybe put in one more on the next one. So you see what I mean about being very sparse with what you're doing. You don't wanna overdo it. Um, so I'm gonna add in one more of the other one um, up here on this third board. And I see a good transitioning spot right about here uh, that I'm thinking would look good. like that and that is all I'm gonna do for the nails does that make sense guys anybody have any questions um, so you kind of got to just look at the grains and the patterning and see what makes sense and where to put them right so I think this one looks great just left alone it doesn't need anything um, and then the other boards I think needed just just a couple here and there um, now I'm gonna show you guys the knot hole look at this knot hole is that cool or what Oh my gosh, look at the detailing in this knot hole. Rubber stamps, you guys, rubber stamps. Blows my mind. Okay, here we go. And I kinda like to not um, totally load up the knot. Um, so let's see, where does it make sense to put a knot hole? Um, probably in this piece right here because you guys can kinda see. Can you see down here? Usually knot holes go where that where the graining of the wood is coming around like that. I'm thinking that's probably a good place to put a knot hole. So that's what I'm going to do. Just like that. Look at that. Okay. And we have a different knot hole. This one has different lines in it. See that? So I'm going to use that one. And I'm going to put that one up in here, right here, like that. Can you guys catch that one? Oh, oh shoot, I froze up. Darn it. Hopefully it'll start back up, guys. I think my internet froze. Did I freeze up guys or did you see that? It's my iPad is freezing, but I'm not sure that you guys, are you guys good? Can I get some thumbs up? Are you guys good? Or did you lock up? It looks so real, I know. Isn't it mind blowing? It is mind blowing guys, mind blowing. It does look real. I'm good, okay, cool. So did you guys, you saw that up there. This one is pretty cool. Thank you guys. So that is the amazing Barnwood Plank stamp. Again, I'm an official IOD stockist. So I carry these um, at my online website at theweatheredshed.com. Um, again, it's a two part set. And one more thing, like I, like I told you earlier, you can just wash these off. Um, and you wanna kinda of keep them, you know, you don't wanna keep loading them up without cleaning them because obviously your, the image is not gonna be as clear. So I just have these disinfectant wipes out here, guys. I mean, that's how easy it is to clean these up. You can just wipe them off, put them in your sink um, with a warm, you know, warm soap and water. And I always keep like old toothbrushes on hand. I like to use those for cleaning these. Um, 
But if you need, if you're in the middle of a project, like I'm not going to run in the house and clean this, I'll just give it a give it a quick wipe to make sure I'm getting all the definition and the, that the paint is not building up inside of there. And then I'll just continue on. So I'm going to, I'm going to finish up this board. I will continue um, laying out a similar pattern of planks. Um, and then once this is done, maybe even over the weekend, maybe tomorrow, I'm going to show you guys the transfer that I'm going to put over top of this, the Iron Orchid Design transfer. It's going to be awesome. Thanks, Julie. Thanks for stopping. Um, so you haven't used them yet, Bonnie? Oh, my goodness. You are going to love them, my dear. What kind of project do you have planned for them? Are you doing furniture? Are you doing um, a wall decor? I'd be curious to know. Have a good rest of your night, Julie. So, yeah, I can't wait to see it either, Deb. <laughs> I'm getting anxious. I want to, like, do it tonight. But I'm going to hang out with Shabby Daddy. I'm not going to work tonight. So, anyhow, well, you guys, thanks for joining. Thanks, thanks, thanks. And have a great rest of your night, and we'll talk to you soon, okay? Bye-bye, guys.